Look at that. That's pretty sweet. So much of the show. Did that clip even makes sense. An out of context. Here's an out of context clip. The fuck was that? Or can you swear? Yeah, we can swear. Yeah. All right. Uh, that's all right. I feel like I love I love this poster. This uh, is pretty cool. It's insanely cool, but so much of the show, I feel like in between the jokes is you getting to do really cool things with this. Like the intro to the show is really cool and there's action sequences that are cool. Like you guys yeah. get to do cool comic booky, fun filmmaking things in the midst of this really silly show. Oh yeah, and even there is a literal comic book that DC put out. They did one last season, they did one this season. They're both truly stunning. Like they got legit, really great artists, the cover artists. We're both amazing. This season's, I mean, I don't want to compare. They're both really good, but this one's is truly stunning. And this guy is incredible. His name's Alex Maleev. He does just this beautiful work and did a Neon Joe one. It looks incredible. And this is cool. And yeah, even last season, you know, there's a thing on a spaceship. That's a spoiler, I guess. But uh, <laughs> we're like running around the spaceship set, and it's like Star Wars on a much smaller scale, of course, but it was really fun. How often do you <laughs> Running find... around this dumb gun, like... <laughs> how, how often do you find that you're writing for the jokes or you're writing for sort of what a movie lover or what like a TV lover would like to see on screen and what you'd like to act in? I think it's a little of both. With this show, obviously, I mean, look, I mean, I really think this is incredible. It's like this old, I mean, the, the template was uh, the Kurt Russell, was it? Big, Big Trouble. Trouble in Little Chinatown? Yeah. yeah. I think just Little China. Oh, in Little China? But Big Trouble in Little Chinatown. I'd love to see, <laughs> I'd love to see that movie. Is that, is that like the definition of an, is that an oxymoron, <laughs> little Chinatown? Like Chinatowns are usually a littler version of, sorry. I'm not sure. But I will say we, for, for a long time, when, we, when I was doing this old show, this is a tangent that'll probably get edited out, but we had our offices in Chinatown and yeah. one of the people I worked with, he's like, I never understood the ending of Chinatown until we worked in Chinatown. And then it made perfect sense. Why? Now you need to watch the movie Chinatown if you don't know that reference. Because it just was like a vague, he's like, forget it, Jake, it's just Chinatown. Oh, that like, line. what does that mean? And then he worked there and he's like, now I know what that means. Okay, specifically that line. Sorry, I, thought I just you ruined were, the Chinatown. I thought, I thought you were referencing like the plot twist. No, 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 no just that like, final line. What are you line. saying about no, no, that? The final line. Yeah. So when Anyway, Big Trouble, Little Chinatown. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> it's a reboot. Uh, but yeah, when we get to do stuff like, like having this become... A, a, a real thing I think is pretty incredible. I just thought they did a, it's a beautifully, like the colors are stunning and it looks really cool. And it's this super dumb show we're making, it really is. And I say that as a compliment because it's, it's fun and it's funny, but we get to have this be a part of it. It's pretty awesome. And even there's a, a big part of the show, there's, it's very melodramatic. It is rooted in the drama. That's where all the comedy comes from. But there's times when we're editing where I feel like, what are we, what is this? What have we done? Is this even a comedy? And uh, maybe it's not. But uh, I think it turned out really good, but there's a lot of dramatic elements. I, feel like I you've, think that answered your question. You've I'm, kind of always walked those lines a little bit with all of your shows. Even, the, even your show that was on True TV, you had an element of that, where what was so funny about this guy was what was also kind of tragic in his personal life. He was sort of ruining himself while, for the sake of this, this gear show that he was creating. Yeah, I guess for me, I always like when things play straight and seriously. Um, more serious. I'm not sure if I just used an improper grammar. We had a big grammar talk backstage uh, <laughs> about improper usage of grammar. Anyway, I do like when things are grounded in the drama and letting the comedy come from there. Right. And also, the, is it funnier when the stakes are higher? When you're working in a sort of comedic world or an absurd world, you have really high stakes? It can help. I mean, especially when it's something as stupid as this, where it's like, werewolves! And it's, <laughs> they're not real. And it's this creating this, yeah, if you make the stakes high, it usually helps. Did you ever think that you would be able to take this world so far based off of the, the, the first incident that you, that you started doing this character? I mean, the answer is no, because this show came from nothing. It literally came from nothing. If you don't know the history of it, if it's, I made a joke on Jimmy Fallon's show and I was promoting another show that I had done and it was 100% fake that... Yeah, I'm making the show. It's called Neon Joe Werewolf Hunter, and I'm dressed as the guy, and it was just nothing. And Adult Swim kind of called my bluff. <laughs> and I kind of had a feeling that might happen, and thankfully they did. They said, we know that was a joke, but it sounds like a show we'd make, Neon Joe Werewolf Hunter. And so they said, why don't you write a, a pilot script and see what happens? I was like, sure. And it was a really fun challenge 
to kind of try to create something from nothing, but there really was nothing. And so it was just figuring out what's the character, what's the premise, where does it take place, and all that, and then it became the show, and now we're two seasons later. I mean, it's not even a season, it's a mini-series. We made five episodes the first time, five the second. But still, the fact that this is even happening is really funny to me. It's one of my favorite parts, that it just came from this stupid joke, completely arbitrary, based on two pieces of clothing I own. Which kind <laughs> of sort of, kind of gives this. you leeway in terms of what the jokes are gonna be within the show as well. They can be as silly and arbitrary and stupid as you want them to be. They're Somewhat. usually connected to a plot, I would yeah, think. But, I yeah, I think it's still, once there's a premise established, I think you wanna follow that somewhat, even though the logic is, doesn't make any sense. There's plenty of conversations we've had, like, does this even track? You still gotta somewhat, it just can't be totally crazy and arbitrary, but, there, it's believe me. I'm saying all this about a massively stupid idea. <laughs> I mean, it's it's ridiculous. It's called Neon Joe Werewolf Hunter, but it's. I think it works. I think it's funny and it's well done. I think it's it looks really great. It's very cinematic. The show, and uh, I'm proud of it. As stupid as it is, so. Yeah. You get to go to a uh, prison this season. Not trying season, to spoil yeah. anything, but uh, what was it like getting to shoot some prison scenes? It was pretty fun. We shot in this old. Uh, uh, non-functioning prison in Staten Island. Uh, it was freezing. It was really cold, but it was super fun to do it. We just all bundled up, and it was fine. I just hate when actors go on shows and complain. Oh, it was so cold, especially when they're making millions of dollars, which I'm not. But um, <laughs> but it was really it was fun. We we were there for three days because it was almost a whole episode takes place in this prison. Three days and a whole e for a whole episode. Well, we probably shot four days per episode. Yeah, it's pretty run and gun. Well, it's a small budget, relatively speaking. And but it looks incredible for, for four days. I we will... did a lot with very little for the show, I think. We made it really look great. And you, when, you're, when you're working with a small budget, you just make your schedule and you figure out where you're really going to focus a lot of time and money. Certain things you can kind of blow through it. The prison, it's a whole episode that pretty much takes... It's bookended by... Actually, the whole scene... I'm sorry, the whole episode takes place in the prison except for the top and the bottom of the episode. Right. Um, oh, right, the, the courtroom, yeah. Yes, there's the courtroom, and then something happens at the end um, where he's not in prison anymore, which I guess you figured out he breaks out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, a prison breakout? No, but he's just not in prison, which could be, he could have been released. Uh, whatever, you see in the trailer, there's a prison break. Um, I don't think the show Don't really... watch the show, don't watch the show. <laughs> I break out of prison, you don't need to watch the show now. I think the show really hinges on its, on its spoilers no, of course and plot. Yeah. No, it doesn't, yeah, it does not matter. You won't be disappointed. And if you're not disappointed by the end of the first episode and you're still watching, you won't care. Uh, in the, in the, <laughs> speaking of the first episode, we see Neon Joe. He's retired. He is in a uh, uh, sort of Bahama -like, Bahamas like bar, a vacation bar. Correct. Oahu Joe's. <laughs> That's what that clip was. We allude to that at the end of uh, the first season that. You know, this is, again, a big spoiler, but at the end of the first season... Oh, very quickly, I just got to give a quick shout-out. I can't believe I forgot. Uh, Rachel Hines in the audience. Where's Rachel? There she is. She just graduated Penn State. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> what an accomplishment. College graduate. Her dad and I go way back, and he works at Howard Stern, and I did that this morning, and he told me about it. And I'm so sad that you didn't do the funny question because I would have laughed so hard. <laughs> he was going to give her a question to ask me, like, and then I would have known it was coming, and then I would have been like, how would you know that? And then I would have realized, oh, that's his daughter. Anyway. <laughs> It'll come later? Okay, good. Oh, she's got a question here. Oh, fantastic. Well, we'll see. We'll okay, we'll yet. see. We'll see. So, talk so about anyway, so he's goes. retired from werewolf hunting, uh, and he's opened up his dream bar, which is this hawaiian theme bar called Oahu Joe's. And uh, if you know the show, you saw Cleve from the first season has come with him and help to help him uh, run the bar. And that was a rival werewolf hunter that shows up, uh, played by the comedian Godfrey, if you recognized him. He's wearing all plaid, because his name is Plaid Jeff. And he's a rival werewolf hunter that dresses all in plaid. But how does Neon Joe say Jeff's name? Well, he said it, he, you know, Neon Joe kind of got like a southern Cajun accent, so it'd be like a, hey, Jill. <laughs> but he was saying that to fuck with him. He was purposely not pronouncing the Fs because he knew that would make Jeff mad. Um, but yeah, that's, so there's a rival werewolf hunter showing up, and there's, you could feel the tension. <laughs> Talk to me about margaritas. <laughs> 
Margaritas was just, uh, that's one of their drinks uh, that they do at the bar. It's, it's a margarita, but with a little more. <laughs> it's a margarita. That's, a, that's an Albertina Rizzo joke right there. She co-wrote the episode, and she's super funny. She works at Fallon, and she's always sending me, like, dumb jokes like that. Just a little margarita, a little more to it. So you brought in, uh, like, some co-writers for this season, because last season I thought you wrote all of the episodes on, on your own, no? Well, basically the way it works is my name's on all the scripts, like, and when you watch the credits, but it's me and two other guys. Just John. the way John Lee and Vernon Chapman, who are part of this group called PFFR, and they make their own shows. They're incredible. Two of the funniest guys around. John just directed last year's Pee Wee Herman movie. Yeah, John Lee, who directed this season, directed last the most recent Pee Wee movie. Vernon writes on South Park, has done it for years, does a lot of stuff with Louie. And they, as a group with Allison Levy, they make incredible shows. Wonder Shows in, Xavier Renegade Angel, The Heart She Holler. They're brilliant. So the three of us write together. And then I write the scripts. So we will work and craft these outlines together. It's very collaborative. I will do the physical writing of the script on my own and then show it to those guys, and we'll keep honing it with notes and then until we're done. So it's very collaborative. And then this season, just because of time and schedule, we hired outside writers to write the scripts from the outlines. Okay. And then I would you know, take their drafts and finish them. So it's still co-writing with them. But we hired two really great writers, one of them being Albertina, and um, she's hilarious. And she came up with Margarita. I just want to give credit where credit's due. Credit has been given but to man, her. man, it's so dumb and makes me laugh. <laughs> what was it like working with uh, outside writers this time? I mean, because uh, did you do that with Delocated We did do all? that one season on Delocated, and it was really just more a matter of just time, and yeah. most shows certainly have bigger writing staffs, and they just crank it out. They can do it much quicker, um, or is it more quickly? I'm really, know. really in my head now about everything grammar? I'm saying. Yeah, it wasn't a grammar thing that problem that I had. It was a specific word. It was a vocabulary issue. It wasn't. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> and it wasn't with you. They so. go hand in hand. Anyway, so yeah, we did that once with one season with Delocated. <laughs> to be but honest, was, I have horrible grammar in reality. Well, I feel like I do as well. I'm sure I've had. I'd love to do a fact check when we're done, a follow up, <laughs> and see what I got wrong. We got a grammar guy upstairs. He takes Great. care of all of that. Great. You were, you were saying? It's fine. I mean, we try to work with people we know, and once you're working with friends and you know that they're funny people, it's usually not an issue, and they were both great. It was Albertina Rizzo, and I think Seth Sanders is his last name, and I, if I screwed it up, I'm so sorry. But he was a guy that I didn't know that John knew, and he was really fantastic. What was the model uh, for building Neon Joe Werewolf Hunter in terms of your... I can never really tell what you're parodying, like what exactly the show is that you're going off of. I'm not parodying anything. I literally made a joke on Fallon, and it was just from nothing. It was just trying to create something that seemed funny to me. And so when I was thinking of it, it was just... To me, I didn't want... The reason I do that dumb accent, and it's not even... I don't even know what it is. It's just like kind of Cajun southerny sounding, which just seemed funny to me for no good reason. It's all arbitrary. And um, a very quick story, that when we shot the pilot, this old lady who was an extra in one of the scenes comes up to me after and she said, I just love your accent. It's so spot on, whatever it is. <laughs> and I think that kind of just sums it up really perfectly because I don't know what it is either. It just seemed funny to me. But there's no like backstory about where he's from, which is fine. It's, it's okay to be mysterious and have it be enigmatic. But I just wanted it to be, you know, to look cool and be dramatic, which is how we ended up here as opposed to the original, like just a neon sweatshirt and Coors Light sweatpants, which is what I wore on Fallon. But it just was, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to, there was no like thing that I was mirroring or parodying. Um, no, yeah, I don't, I don't mean that the show parodies anything specifically, but I think so often things like this, not that there's anything like this show, would find a sort of Walker, Texas Ranger, or some sort of show that had a, uh, a, a, at least a structure that you would, you would follow and kind of mimic. But it doesn't seem like you have that. Well, the th no nothing terribly specific, although I will say Jaws, when I was writing the pilot and trying to figure it out, it just started to feel like, here's this guy that shows up to town to save the day, and it just, for whatever reason, felt like Quint is the guy that shows up at the town hall and, you know... <laughs> And I'll catch you on shock for you. It's a terrible Quint impression. Um, but I just, it's such a masterful performance. First of all, if you haven't seen Jaws, it's an amazing movie. See it. And his performance, everybody's good in that, though. Like Richard Dreyfus and, uh, uh, oh, my God, why am I blanking on uh, Roy Scheider? And 
Robert Shaw, Jesus Christ, thank you. Um, <laughs> truly masterful performances all around. And then it just really honed in on that. And I just, we did a very, we mirrored that scene in the town hall of the first season of Neon Joe, where everyone's arguing and freaking out that there's this creature and people are dying and what are we gonna do? And then, you know, Neon Joe's there. Um, so it kind of started to have that feel for the first season and the second season's very different. Yeah, it goes all over the place. I have to, uh, I have to ask, you know, Girls ended just a month ago. You had a pretty good part on Girls for, for all of its seasons, right? Really, since the beginning. Or since season yeah, two? Yeah, since season two. Right. What was it like to say goodbye to that show? It was uh, sad. It was a really fun job. You know, when you're lucky enough as... That's just an acting job that I had that I auditioned for. I didn't know them. And it was a really great experience. Um, I thought a really great show and a really fun character for me to do. And fun to go to set. Everyone's nice and smart and funny and creative. Excuse me. So it was too bad that it was over. It was a great time. Yeah, your character becomes uh, fairly obsessed, I think, if I remember correctly, at the end with, uh, with Lena Dunham's Hannah having a, having a child. It's like he wants another child, right? I, yeah, he just kind of locked on to this moment of like thinking he's figured out his purpose. It's pretty fun to shoot that scene. But the whole thing was fun. I mean, every... I didn't do a lot. I think I did one or two episodes a season, but it was really fun. I wish I could have done more. It was such a good time. Did they develop that character around any ideas that you had after shooting the first step, shooting the first time with them, or did it just end up becoming like, hey, we need you this day, and you go, and you're like, oh, this, they have this specific idea for this character, and I'm just going to act in it. I'm just going to Yeah, perform. I think they just... You know, it's all from the writing. I mean, they deserve all the credit. Uh, you know, they came up with the storylines, and if, if anything was influenced by what I did, so be it. But I just would go to work, and I'd get the scripts, and I'd get them ahead of time. Uh, but, yeah, it was all just I'm an actor on their show, and I didn't get to have... They, they would let me improvise every now and then and ad-lib stuff, and they were very collaborative in that sense and confident enough to allow me to try stuff. And if it worked, great. If not, they wouldn't use it, but... Let's get some questions from um, the audience. Who has a, oh, looks like we have a question right here. Hi, everyone. I'm Rachel. Uh, so switching gears a little bit from Neon Joe, what would be the most ult ultimate gear that you could receive? God, I can't believe you didn't do one of your dad's questions. I'm so sad. No, that's from him. He oh, it is? He okay. Is. Yeah, don't worry. The ultimate piece of gear that I could receive? Yeah. Wow, man, I don't want to waste time. I guess you can edit this out, right? If I just sit here for five minutes thinking. <laughs> I won't edit it out. <laughs> I'll make sure that stays. Uh, man, the ultimate piece of gear. Well, wow. Because I got, I mean, I got a custom-made bicycle on the last season. And oh, that we talked about that bicycle. Pretty, Thomas, sweet. right? That. Oh, my God. This guy goes, Tom Callahan, yeah. horse is his brand. He's in Williamsburg. He makes awesome bikes. Um... I used to hang out with that guy when I first moved to New York. Really? Yeah. Cool dude. Yeah, very cool dude. Uh, makes beautiful. Check him out. Horse. Beautiful bikes. Beautiful frames. Um, boy, ultimate piece of gear. Oh, man. Jeez. Should be like an instant answer, right? Uh, I'll just say like a, I don't know. I'm the, the first thing that popped my head is like a basketball from Dr. J. I don't know. There it is. <laughs> Nobody knows who Dr. J is, right? It's all right. He's a, he's a basketball up. player, right? Yeah, one of the greatest ever. <laughs> Just one of the greatest ever. Yeah. I don't know basketball, John. Oh, know. man. Look up Dr. J layup against the Lakers. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Next question. Hello, John. Such a Hi. huge fan of uh, all your characters, especially Councilman Jam, who's like... One, personally, one of the best villains in television. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, um, from learning how Neon Joe was a show that pretty much came from nothing and you're able to write a successful series out of it, do you ever see yourself writing a feature film? Well, thank you for calling it successful. I appreciate that. Because <laughs> uh, I have no idea. I've never, th I've never thought about writing a movie. I mean, I guess I have. I've never thought really about really pursuing it, I always feel like I'm more of a short form person. Anytime I feel like if I start writing something long, it's like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Like even having John and Vernon to be working with me on this, they're, they're two brilliant writers and they are really helpful with all the, long, once it gets start, starts to get bigger and you gotta connect all the stories and plot, they're so good with that. And I feel like, whatever, I'm just making dumb stuff. So maybe one day, I'd still love to try it because I've never done it. If I had an idea that felt like, 
really worth pursuing, then maybe. Uh, one more. Hey, John. Uh, Hi. So um, I'm just curious, like, uh, what what was the whole decision behind making this into like a, a nightly series? Because I think you know it worked really well for the first season. And say that again. What was it like? You know, what was the decision behind making it into a nightly, you know, uh, episode type thing? Like episodic series. Episodic series. Yeah. I guess I'm I'm not being a jerk. I'm not following the question. What was the decision about making it a a like making it air like every night. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I think it came down to when we were writing the first time around, it just turned into the stories. You know, we were maybe going to do more, and then we decided to make less. And I think it, that came from the network, you know, wanting to do. I think they had done something like that with another show where they made it a mini series where it would air just every night of the week. And so we decided, or maybe they did, and we just, I thought it was a good idea, actually. I kind of like that it's just five and it's every night and then it's done. It kind of makes it almost this little event and you're not waiting once a week. Um, so it kind of came from that. And then we did it the same way this time and approached it where we know we're writing five. And um, I kind of like it. It's kind of fun actually that you could just watch them every night in a row. So I think it was a combination of just logistics with the scripts and the network wanting to do it. And we thought it was a good idea. And I think it works. I kind of like it. When does it start? It starts this Monday, the 22nd at midnight, which I guess is technically Tuesday. But it is, it's, it's Monday night at midnight, and then it'll air every night next week. Uh, so the finale will be Friday night, and then I think it'll rerun once a week. I'm not sure what night yet. And they'll run that for five weeks, and then I think it's done, or exists online. This is your second show that you've made with Adult Swim, right? Correct. What is it like to Third show overall. <laughs> What's it like developing a show with them? They're awesome. You know, you, they just want weird stuff, and they encourage it to be as creative and inventive as possible, and the weirder the better. And, you know, when you're making that type of comedy or that type of, if you're creatively inclined in that way, you really couldn't ask for a cooler place to make a show. And, you know... Their shows, there's a wide range of weirdness on that network, so it's great. They, they're very confident. They don't just give notes to give notes. Their notes are usually pretty thoughtful and fairly minimal, and they are helpful as well, so they're really great to work with creatively. It's kind of great. Have you ever had an incident uh, on something you've worked on before where you got notes for just the sake of giving notes? What do those look like? It's always just, I mean, well, I'm trying to think of a specific example. A lot of times it's just, I think, network executives, executives feel like, I got to do my job, I got to give some notes here, as opposed to, this feels pretty strong, you know, no notes, or how about a couple things right here, it's just, it gets really nitpicky, and it's not even that integral to the story, or it's just annoying, I'm trying to think of a good one, and nothing's popping to mind, because I've been very fortunate to not have to deal with that too much, but I can't think of a good one, I guess I could have made one up. Would you be able to deal with it if you had to deal with it more? I just had a curiosity. As a person who's known you for a few years, I, like, I don't know, would you be able to play that? It's just a greatly phrased question. Would you be able to deal with it if you had to deal with it? <laughs> if you had to deal with it, could you deal with it? Would you want to? I mean, we got to pitch that show. Can John Glazer deal with it? If he wants to deal, if he can, if he... <laughs> <laughs> when forced, I guess. I mean, I'd like to, I'd like to think, yeah. You have no choice other than to say, fuck this and walk away. If I had a ton of money, if I was a weirdo billionaire, or if some weirdo billionaire wants to finance me, just throwing it out there. An Elon, Bring an it Elon on. Musk type, as the show says? Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly right. If a weirdo Elon Musk type or Elon Musk just wants to say, I like what you do, you do weird stuff, here's a ton of money, you're good to go, go do what you want. Let's make it happen. I'm not sure which camera to give my thumbs to. The, yeah. <laughs> the weirdo billionaire who also has an obsession with alternative comedy. It's just like... <laughs> yeah. That would be... You never know. You won't know unless you try. So I did it. I put it out there. Let's see if it comes back to me. Yeah. John, uh, I love the show. I love having you here. It's good to see you. Thank you for being here. It starts Monday night at midnight on yep. Adult Swim, and it runs the entire week. Neon Joe, Werewolf Hunter, John Glazer, everybody. Thanks. Thank you.